The title of my book is Upgrading and Repairing PCs. Now, originally, I set out to write a book just on computer repair, but I began to realize that if you were repairing a system that was more than a few months old, the technology would have changed so much that you weren't really just doing a repair, you were also doing an upgrade. So the, the concept of upgrading and repairing are really essentially the same thing. Now, when dealing with uh, upgrades or repairs or, or systems in general, we basically have three routes to go. Number one, you can take a system that's already existing and we can upgrade it. That is, improve it, bring it up to modern technology. Number two, we can build a system from scratch. Or number three, you can just purchase a store-bought system. Let's examine all of these uh, different uh, ways of going about things. Number one, as far as an upgrade is concerned, when dealing with an upgrade, you're normally going to be changing the processor in the system. Now, in most cases, in virtually all cases, that is, the motherboard that's in your system now will not accept the new processor. So you're not going to only replace the processor, you're also going to have to replace the motherboard. And then that new motherboard is going to require a different type of memory than your previous motherboard also. So the essential components of an upgrade are processor, motherboard, and RAM. Now with prices, you know, these days, motherboards are around $100 to $150. You can get a reasonable speed processor for around $200 or so. And then memory, um, for 256 megs, which would be the minimum amount I'd recommend today, that's going for about $100. And you know, we're talking about $400 to $450 for a typical upgrade. Now, the thing you have to consider is that the upgrade is probably not worthwhile, that it's not worth to spend that kind of money unless you're going to be doubling the speed of the system you have now. So let's say, for example, you had a uh, Pentium 4 and it was running at 1.6 gigahertz and you decided that you were going to upgrade to a Pentium 4 1.8 or 2.0 gigahertz. That's really not enough of an upgrade to justify, you know, doing all this work. And, again, that new, you know, processor may require a different motherboard. The sockets have changed, for example, on the Pentium 4, and you may even require a different type of memory. So to spend, you know, 400 and to $500 on a new motherboard processor and RAM without at least doubling the performance of the system is usually not worthwhile. Now, I have a couple of examples of that right here. When considering an upgrade of a, of a system, we can go the, the Pentium 4 route, which is the you know Intel's current uh, state-of-the-art, top-of-the-line processor. And here we have a motherboard which supports the Pentium 4. We have the Pentium 4 processor, and we have 256 megabytes of RAM. The other way to go, of course, is the AMD Athlon. And here I have an AMD Athlon processor XP, that is Athlon XP. We have a motherboard which supports it, which has the socket 462, otherwise known as socket A. And then we have also 256 megabytes of RAM. Now, both of these are similarly priced. Actually, the AMD processor is a little bit less expensive than Intel's. They have a little bit of a price advantage there. So either way, though, we're, we're dealing with the same thing. We're replacing the motherboard, the processor, and the RAM. And you have to decide whether that's going to be worthwhile for you. Now, let's say after you've done that, you've replaced the motherboard processor and RAM in your system, and you think you're done with your upgrade, then all of a sudden you realize, you know, the hard disk that I have really is, is not adequate. I need a bigger hard drive. So now you've added a hard drive to the mix. Now you're replacing the hard drive as well. And, hmm, maybe the uh, existing video card you have is not adequate. Some of the newer games or, you know, high-end applications require a higher-performance video card. So now you're adding a video card to the mix. And maybe your existing uh, motherboard, you know, didn't have a built-in network, and now you've decided to add a cable modem, so you need a, a LAN card to attach to the system. So now you've added a LAN card. Maybe you need to upgrade the sound card in order to have better sound. By the time you start evaluating all the things you're purchasing, you're not really upgrading your existing system. You're building a new system from scratch. The only thing you're keeping is perhaps the case in the power supply. And possibly the power supply you have is inadequate to support all of these new components. Many of the newer processors, for example, are extremely power hungry. I call this the uh, Frankenstein syndrome. That's where, you know, you started out just replacing one or two things, and then before you know it, you've built yourself a new system from scratch. Now, the only problem with that is that uh, if you add up the, the price of all these individual components you purchase one at a time piecemeal, and then the amount of time you spent on it all, you will have spent far more money doing that than simply purchasing a new system, you know, store-bought. Um, I know, you know, with the book being Upgrading and Repairing PCs, it seems a, a shame that I would ever recommend anybody buy a store-bought system. But if economics is your, your main concern, if saving money is important to you, then I think you'll find that it'll be hard for you to beat the economics of a store-bought system, you know, 
compared to building your own. I mean, you can build your own system from scratch, and I do it all the time myself. The problem is I always end up spending more money than if I would have simply called up, you know, 1-800-Dell you know, or Gateway or Micron PC and bought a system from them. So keep that in mind. The cool thing about building your own system is you get to pick all of the individual parts, and by selecting all the parts individually, you can also make sure you're using industry standard components, and that means that you'll have the, a system that is the most upgradable and repairable in the future. That is a system that you can really support. Now, another thing to consider, though, is that many of these name brand system manufacturers, like some of those I mentioned, also sell industry standard systems, which means that even if you purchase a store-bought system, you can have something that can be upgraded or repaired later on. That is, you can purchase replacement motherboards, which will fit directly in place of the one that's in there, you know, with the new processor and RAM. You know, you can upgrade the hard drive at a later point in time, the video card. Etc. So just because you purchase a store-bought system doesn't mean that you can't upgrade it later. Of course, that's as long as you purchase what we consider an industry standard system. If you purchase a system that uses proprietary components, then you'll find that you will not be able to upgrade the motherboard. You will not be able to use, you know, the existing power supply and chassis and things like that. So in that case, an upgrade will almost, in, you know, always entail building a new system from scratch. That is, you'll be replacing the chassis, the power supply, the motherboard, and virtually all of the components in the system. I mean, just saving the hard drive and the keyboard and the mouse, to me, is uh, not really much of an upgrade so much as building a whole new system. So these are some of the important things that you'll have to consider. Now, if you do decide to build a system from scratch, you want to find, you know, an industry standard ATX chassis. You want to use industry standard ATX motherboard form factors. Obviously, we're going to use one of the, you know, state-of-the-art processors, such as the Pentium 4 or the Athlon XP. We're going to use industry standard memory, video cards, disk drives, etc. And in that case, we can, you know, build a system reasonably economically that will outperform most of the other systems on the market, including many of the store-bought systems, and something that you then know everything, you know, everything about all of the components that are in the system. You'll be able to support them yourself. You know, you'll be able to service the system yourself and, of course, upgrade it in the future.